Hello, friends. Welcome to the Show to Be Named Later podcast. I am your host, Johnny Boss, along with my co-host, I believe the only guy who unsuccessfully tried to petition Sonny Gray to change his name to Cloudy Blue, Noah Storzinger, in, in, in good old KC. Uh, do you get that reference? Did you see the news out of spring training today or uh, yesterday? About what, he got, a, got a hamstring or something that's, that's yep. bothering him? Yep. Yep. Uh, he left, uh, I believe in the second inning of his second start, um, and refuses to talk about the hamstring until we know a little bit more. The guy is what 104 years old. So, um, and, and I, I have to say, I feel somewhat, uh, somewhat responsible for it. It's like, you know, if you believe in karma or whatever, but I was, um, I was talking to my good friend, Chris, we were talking about, and I, w- I had all this angst about our opening uh, rotation, you know, and we, we started talking about Sonny Gray. And as we talked about it, and I, and listen, I'm glad that the twins did not give him, I was talking about them having to spend money, but there's no way you could have given Sonny Gray what he is making in St. Louis. And you know how I feel about the St. Louis Cardinals. I love Sonny Gray. However, I mentioned to my friend, Chris, I said, you know what? I hope Sonny Gray fucking sucks this year, man. And he goes, are you serious? You really believe that? And I was like, no, I love Sonny Gray. But my point was the reason I wanted him to suck and just, and just lay a big shit burger was to show Minnesota twins fans that we actually know what we're doing. You know what I mean? And then I saw that and I'm like, and we've said it before in no way, do we want people to get injured or anything like that? It was just a point. So I feel bad, Mr. Gray or Mr. Blue or whatever it is. I apologize for that, but there it is. No, yeah, he, it's the same thing. Like when I see these the prospects that we send out, uh, like Spencer Steer, Christian Encarnacion yep. Strand with with the Reds. You know, you, you want to you like them coming up through the system, but you you sit there and you're just like, man, I hope you hit a buck eighty for the rest of your career just to make it look better on this trade. But I agree. I agree. All right. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna warn you or any, if anybody's watching, um you're kind of gonna get the yin and the yang of Johnny Voss today because um I, I'm gonna really try to be positive on some some regards, but it's been a shitty uh, weekend of Minnesota sports, even with the wild, uh, finally winning a game last night, you know, how behind a uh, Kaprizov's hat trick. Uh, but, but so I, I'm going to try to give, you know, give and take whatever it is. Um, first thing I, I wanted to just to mention to you because, uh, I was, I was just wondering what your opinion on is on this is, um, interesting comment I got on Saturday night, uh, from a fan of the show to be named later. Or I think he's a fan. Cause I think I saw him wearing a show to be named later sweatshirt, uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago, but he made a comment to me Saturday night. Um, and he said, well, now we have somebody that talks Minnesota sports, uh, that takes longer to get a question out than Dan Barrero. And, and I was like, oh, that kind of hurts, man. But I couldn't really snap on him because a, I love this guy and I've loved him for about 35 years. And second, he was doing me a solid. He was driving me to a, a concert in St. Paul so I could have enjoy a few barley sodas. And he drove me from Shaka. He came from Shakopee, picked me up in Richfield, drove me to St. Paul, dropped me off, went back to Shakopee, and then came and picked me up and gave me a ride home. So I couldn't really snap on him and say, but I tried to defend myself a little bit by saying, look, you're the same guy that said, when I see your show goes over an hour, I'm not going to watch it or to, to that degree. So I said, you got to understand, I'm trying to condense everything into under an hour or else we'll be just talking about the same two topics every, every single time. Right. And so it took me what 35 minutes to get to the question, but I guess that's my question to you is, are you finding that it takes me too long to get to, because he said you got tangents and then you eventually get back to it. But man, you take a long time to get to the point. Your thoughts on that? Well, I think that's that's the fun part, and that's just the the best part about like the whole point of this show is just the average Minnesota fan talking sports, and that's how the average Minnesota sports fan talks sports, right? Right. Um, but now I will say, yeah, I think it's the last the last episode. We could run a timer because as I'm editing it, I'm like, holy 
cow. It took you had a couple points in there, so I think it'd be fun to do a timer. But but yeah. no, I mean, if he wants to talk, we can get him on the podcast too. <laughs> right, and it it was the last show that he was commenting because I think he said he was driving back from Chicago or something, and and he was, I listened to it, and man, it takes a lot. Okay, so I will work on it. As, I mean, it, it's. It, it, it's a it's a journey. It's not a destination. I, I'm going to try to improve as as you know we we do this more often. But uh, man, there's a lot of things that I want to want to get, and they do kind of you know. And I'm getting on, and I have senior moments and that kind of thing. So um, this show that that's my first defense. We're going to get to a second defense um, in just a little bit of time. Um, but the first thing that I unless you have something that you want to bring up right off right off the bat. Well, I'm assuming you want to start with the big boy in the room is the, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is where the yin starts. My first deal is I want to give props to Anthony Edwards. And I'll, I'll tell you why, because I don't know if you had heard anything. I heard small rumblings of negativity towards Anthony Edwards on Friday night. They were playing the Kings. And during the course of the first half, all of a sudden he was gone and nobody knew where he was. And uh, the story goes that his first child was being born and he went to witness uh, the birth of his first child. And I salute you, sir. I, I have no problem with that at all. I think those that criticized him are a bunch of chaches for, for even – even hinting that, that that there's a problem with it. It's still sports, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. And I was just talking to a buddy this morning about that. And I brought that up and I'm like, man, I got all the respect. I said, you know, if he had something worked out with the wolves and said, if she goes into labor, I'm gone. If it's if during the game, even if he didn't, if he got someone whispered in his ear and said, man, her water broke, uh, go, it's gone. I have no problem with that because it's life takes precedent over basketball any day of the week. All right. And, you know, I, I, when I was talking to my, my buddy this morning, I, he said, well, that's a once in a lifetime thing. And I said, well, probably he's going to have 12 more kids before the end of his career. Cause I think he's got another one on the way. And he to to his point, he said, look, the first, the birth of your first child is a once in a lifetime thing. And, and so I salute you, Anthony Edwards. Well done. Good for you, sir. I, I think you'd be kicking yourself if you if you're you know you're 42 and 16 at that point, and if if you had won a regular season game to go 43 and 16 against the Kings, uh, but you miss the birth of your first child, I think you'd forever be kicking yourself. So, absolutely, I think that was a great. I think we win the game if he's there, but you know, it, well, they, again, it's sports, and okay. and he, that that definitely took precedent. Over, yep, over. yep, I didn't have it. the only problem I had was no, they didn't say anything about it during the game. And then we looked it up and it said he or they said personal reasons, but then they had him on the injury report for personal reasons. I'm like, did he have a, a blow up with, with Finchie? Like, what is there something they're not telling it? That's the only thing I wish they would have let us in on why he was he missed that game. Yeah, uh, even because it's not like like if it was like a national game, I'm sure they would have been. Well, we're going to go interview Finch now, and he, I'm sure he would have been like, "Yeah, he's having a kid." Yeah. But yeah, to your point, I'm sure they didn't know much. I, I wasn't able to watch it. I was I was out, but um, yeah, I, I'm sure that would have been because it was frustrating when I saw it on Twitter. As I'm, I mean, I'm at the bar and I'm just scrolling. I'm like, "Oh my gosh, yeah. like, what happened?" So. Yep, um, and and um, to your point, I, I would say because we're going to believe me, we are going to get into this in in just a, a, a few seconds, but. That Kings game, totally winnable game. And yes, you would think that we win that game if Edwards was playing. But on the counter deal, Darren Fox wasn't playing for the Kings either. So, um, but but yeah, let's get let's get into it right now because um, once again, I'm in defense mode, and now I'm going to defend myself against you um, because and, and it was tricky because I looked it up, but we talked about. Um, the Wolves offensive uh, rankings, and you said you had the numbers right there. And I, I did look it up today. Um, and the reason I did was because Tim Conway was on a, a local sports show um, last Thursday. And that local uh, 
that local Minnesota uh, sports guy had Conley on his show, and he, he said, you guys are 16th in offensive deal. And Conley never never called him out on it. said, so I looked it up, and now we are 17th in, in offensive ranking um, because, you know, we only scored 88 freaking points last night. Um, but, you know, we, we had talked about this before, but I'm, I'm telling you right now that there are some real red flags right now with, with this team offensively. Yeah. So, well, to go back to the last episode, I, I definitely, I was looking at the wrong, the wrong number is it was, it was for, I think the whole 2024, we had been fifth or whatnot in offense array the whole, the whole year, I believe we're, we're at 17th now. So I'll correct myself on that. But, um, you know, the whole year I've said, I'm not worried. I'm not worried. And quite frankly, I'm still not worried. However, absolutely. There are red flags there in the offense. Um, especially that, that clutch offense in the fourth quarter. Um, they just can't figure it out They they can't figure it out. And, um, you know, I will say Kyle Anderson came out uh, yesterday and it said something along the lines of, I don't know the exact quote, but something along the lines of, you know, we're going through it. We're figuring it out. Um, we're going to be completely ready come playoff time. I like the optimism, um, but, you know, I got to see if figure it out first, yep. quite frankly. Yep. Um, but I will say, you know, this team has not lost or this team has not lost a game more than seven points in the last I think it's like four or five weeks. Um, you know, it, it took a lot for these good teams to beat the Wolves. I mean, they didn't shoot well. There's some questionable uh, uh, foul calls, referee calls. Um, you know, it, part of me wants to say it was just some some bad luck. Uh, but at the same time, there are absolutely some red flags, particularly in this late game offense. Well, well, and here and, – and we'll get to – the fourth quarter here in, in just a little bit, but you know, yesterday I looked and you know, I was talking, I watched the game with good friend again yesterday. And, and I went, look, man, look at this. You have Edwards and towns. And that was it. That was it for scoring. Okay. And Mike Conley didn't make a basket and, and he, offensively he has not been good. And I'm not going to talk shit about Mike Conley. I, I like him. However, that means that Gobert is going to give you a basket here or there if they get lob the ball into him close, okay? Or if he gets fouled, whatever. But you cannot count on him as a scorer in that starting fight. Jaden McDaniel, now I, this one I like, yin and yang. One of my buddies, because I never know if my friends watch his show or not, but he brought it up and he was like, um, he's like, oh, Jade, I watched the game with him on Friday. He's like, I think Jaden McDaniel, like, watch the podcast perhaps because Friday night he had a great game. Right. And then went away again on Sunday. So he is not even close offensively to what we had hoped that he was going to be. Um, so basically you have two guys in the starting rotation. And then on the, on the backside, Kyle Anderson going to get you one basket a night. Nas Reed did not have a basket yesterday, folks, not one, one made field goal. Okay. Uh, Mikhail, he is just I like him. I do you do or you don't? I like him. I do, but he's inconsistent. Okay. And and I'm telling you that unless they figure out where the scoring is going to come from, um it's 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 not going to be a good a good show down the road. No, and, and you, you know, they gotta figure it out. Uh, a lot of these guys that are on this bench unit. I, I, to me, it's either I, right, everyone needs to go get on the bench, needs to go get eight, 10, 12 points. Everyone, yes. it yes. needs to be a balanced scoring effort. Now, the hard part is these are guys that, you know, Nikhil's never been asked to go score a bunch of points. Nas Reed, we kind of just let loose. I feel like Kyle Anderson yeah. is not supposed to give you eight, 10, 12 yeah, points. Right. Gobert, you're not going to ask him to give you how many. He's there to play defense. So, yeah, this team needs a, a guy to come off and, and just shoot the lights out. I think we've noticed that we need a shooter on this team. And, I mean, these these guys can shoot the ball. Nas can shoot the ball. Nikhil can shoot the ball. But to your point, Nikhil's not a, a pull-up just he's going to get you however many threes a game. Um, he can shoot well. Nas can shoot well. But this team lacks that right now. And it's hard to ask Nikhil to go out and get you 
12, 15 points right. a night because he's not going to. But but th but then you can't afford to have um, a deal like yesterday's game um, against a team that we should have beat the Clippers. It came out solid in the first quarter, and then what happened in the second quarter? You can't – in the NBA, you cannot have droughts where you go six, seven minutes without a made field goal. You just can't do it. You're not going to win games doing that. And, and so um, – I, I don't have the answer because, you know, we'll get to turnovers here also, uh, but it's it's alarming right now because um, you get to the fourth quarter. Well, okay, let, let me back. So the other thing that I wanted to bring up was every time, because January, February, and now March, new chapter, and we're seeing the same thing. Win one, lose one, oh, lose two, okay? And – Every time we lose a game, we've got players. It's Gobert, it's Towns, it's Finch, it's uh, it's all these guys saying, Kyle Anderson, we know what we're doing. Our, our worst enemy is us. The, you know, the Kings didn't beat us. Uh, the Clippers didn't beat us. We beat ourselves. Okay, that's all fine and good. But my question is, is that true? Turnovers have been crazy in the fourth quarter, but is it a fact that you're beating yourselves or are teams adjusting and knowing what you're going to do in the fourth quarter and saying, well, all we got to do to stop this team is do this, that, or the other thing. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, they, they seem to have, uh, I, mean, I think teams have some, some have adjusted. I think the Clippers, uh, uh, again, I wasn't able to watch that game, but from what I saw, they were, uh, they put some height on Mike Conley, which rattled him a little bit. Um, we never can defend the fast break for whatever reason. No. That's why I will say, you know, if we match up with the Kings in the playoffs, that's one where I'm a little nervous because they just run, 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 run. And we don't, um, and we don't defend in the half, you know, we don't defend the fast break. So, um, but I will say like a lot of those turnovers and everything, that's where you beat yourself. I, I, I watched a lot of those. It, it's some dumb turnovers that it, you, you just, they're terrible. Uh, Come on, figure it out. And it's always uh, in the fourth quarter. And and I think I heard a stat today that um initially as the year started, we were eleven and two in crunch closing time situations, and now we're four and fifteen or, or four and uh, four and eleven in our last fifteen games. And and it's I just I think of it back to, to baseball, right? Where it's you you know, you could go you could bat 500 one day and that's, it's basically what they were doing there. They were batting five, you know, they were, they were killing it in the, in, in crunch time in fourth quarters. Um, we talked about it all the time where it was like, man, yeah, we let them hang around and the fourth game or fourth quarter came around. We said, all right, this is, this is a time where we, we shut it down. I think it's just, it, they're pressing right now. I think teams are adjusting a little bit. They're pressing in their heads. It's mental right now. They're going through a slump. We, we've seen them do it. They know how to do it. Yep. But right now it's, it, it's, there's something in there where they're going to have to adjust to some new defense. They're going to have to get out of their head. I think some of them are still on vacation from the all-star break, um, but they're going to have to fix it because, you know, it, we, we, they can talk all they want about, you know, right. You're going to see it in the playoffs. You're going to have to back it up. You're going to have well, to back gonna, it up. You're going to see, I mean, cause I was thinking about the playoffs and, Right now, I do not feel comfortable with this team in the fourth quarter. Their offense looks absolutely stagnant. Um, they, they are not only are they turning the ball over, which, like I say, is that on the Wolves or is that on the fact that teams are knowing how to play us in when it comes down to the fourth quarter? But my point is that if you don't know how to close games out right now, and this has been going on for about two months now, okay. When you get to the playoffs, it's a whole different ball game, man. Every Those are the games where every basket counts. Like you are on the edge of your seat offensively and defensively because everything counts. And do I have confidence right now in this team being able to have uh, the, the, the moxie to be able to go, you know what, this is what we need to do at the end of the game, and we're just going to go do it. No, I don't right now in the regular season. When we get to the playoffs, right now I do not feel like this is a team that's got it figured out. So my only my only thing, and, and yes, to your point, it, it, it you get a little nervous, especially when you think about the playoffs and where this team's at right now. Like if the season ended now, you'd be terrified for, yeah. for this first-round matchup. Now – my only thing that that puts me 
in a different mindset is, yes, the playoffs are completely, it is different basketball where every possession counts. And the Anthony Edwards that you're seeing now in the fourth quarter, or even now where quite frankly should be an MVP conversation with how good this team has done and how, and what he has averaged this past month, um, you're going to get a different Anthony Edwards in the playoffs. You absolutely are. The lights turn on for him. Yep. You're going to get a different Nikhil Alexander-Walker. That guy locks people down when the lights come on. You're going to get a different Rudy Gobert. You're going to get these guys that they they know that the moment counts. And I think right now, like I said, there's something in their head. It's a We talked about the uh, the long season and, and getting tired over the, you know, being the one yeah. seed for a long time. This team's never done it. And they were the one seed the whole year. They're not right now, but it's got to mess with their head a little bit. I, I would, I would assume, but that's where I'm at, at least with the playoffs is I think this team knows where they need to be for the playoffs. Are they going to flip the switch? I really hope so. Yeah. Um, you know, and but when we talk about passion or we talk about, motivation. I mean, I made this comment um, to my good friend the other day and I was like, I said on Saturday, I said, you know what, man, Edwards, I am hoping that he has a very masculine boy. And then he comes out and just drops shit on the Clippers on Sunday, you know, and, and I thought that's the Edwards we were going to see, you know what I mean? But um, here is my analogy of the Wolves right now. And in no way am I comparing an NBA season to to what I'm going to compare it to right now but this is how I see it okay uh because we've been talking about it in, in March this is the third month of we're talking about it and what it reminds me of is going for three years going you know there's really not any problems at the at the border at our at our southern border right like it, it just let's not even talk about it because there's no problems at all and uh we're just going to dismiss it and then now we're going to scramble because it's election time. And now we're going to talk about the border, right? Same thing. The Wolves talking now, this is month three, where you can say, we got all the time in the world to fix it. And now the playoffs are, oh, there's a there's an election here in eight months. So now we're going to scramble to try to fix it when you had all this time to fix it. Okay. And like I say, I'm not comparing our Southern border, uh, problems to the Timberwolves definite motherfucking problems right now. Okay. But you've got to figure it out now because you can't scramble during the playoffs and go, gee, how do, how do we adjust to this? I, we've never been in this situation. Make it like it's a playoff right now. Make this season. You've got 20 some games left. Make it like it's an election motherfucking year right now or too much. No, I, I think you're right. I I think it's hard with, with like even with that Clippers game, um some of those some of those calls should have went the other way, but um I think we match up really well with that team. I just do. I thought so until yesterday. I think mean, we did only lose by one, but I'm sorry, go ahead. Well that's the thing. I, I, I just think I mean, like I said, the Kings are the really the team that I'm like, gosh, I don't that I just if they run, we're we're done. Yeah. And and but I was gonna ask you, you know, this team is the the two seed. I, I think there's still that chance they finish with the one seed. But um, who who's your ideal first round matchup? The Memphis the Grizzlies. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, it's funny that you bring up matchups because the one team that I did not want to see uh, in the playoffs is the New Orleans Hornets. Okay. Oh yeah. Sorry. They're not the Hornets. Uh, we really do not match up well. And especially if, if Zion is, is playing, um, that's a team that now the Kings have now slowly made their way in to that field. Okay. And they're the only team that's beaten us twice on our home court. Okay. Uh, I don't think I would, I would be upset with, with seeing the Dallas Mavericks in the first round. Uh, <clears throat> but I I am really concerned right now that even if we saw the Lakers, you know, you were talking about where everybody is and knowing what the playoffs mean and the fact that the NBA only cares when it is the playoffs. I think the Lakers could give us uh, some fits. 
uh, especially if we're playing the way that we're playing right now. So I don't even know if there's a, a great – give me the trailblazers in the first round. That's the only way I feel comfortable right now. Dallas is a good one. The Lakers, I, 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 they're the 10 seed right now, so technically they'd have to win, you know, right. those two games to, to play us. Um, well, and that's the thing. It's, it's the Lakers. It's LeBron. How do you kick LeBron out in the first round? That's the thing. Same thing. I think we match up really well with the struggling Golden State Warriors right now. Yeah. Yeah. But you also got Steph. Are they going to let Steph right. lose in the first round? That's the thing. So Dallas, to me, is is that is a good one. I would probably be a little nervous to get Phoenix as well. Oh, They're the seven seed. Ooh, ooh, but, that I see. So as you see, because my, I was gonna say, like, I really don't see the Wolves as being the number one seed um, this year. I, I, I don't. I just the way that things are going, and um, so my question to you then is, because with the Twins. You know, we asked that question, like if they win against Toronto last year in the in the, the playoffs and then they lose, which they did. Do you think that that season it's a it's a victory? And I said, yeah, absolutely. They won. They won a playoff series. It was kind of magical. And then they blew it in the next round. So would you feel and let's say that even even if the Wolves were a number one seed. But let's say they weren't. They were a second or a, or a two or a three seed. If they won their first playoff series, and then let's say they got blown up four four games in a row, they lost. Would you consider this season a victory? Uh, yes. Would other people no? Yeah, right. That's... Only because, <laughs> well, only because of where this team has been for the last however many right. years. I understand you were the two seed and um, you know what? I mean, it, it that's fine. You, you can play a really good regular season. I've never seen the wolves win a playoff series, just like I'd never yeah. seen the twins win a playoff series. Um, and you know, th that's why like, it, here's the thing. It's, it's really sad that personally, and, and maybe I'll get flack for it, but I don't want the wolves to get the one seed <laughs> because of the backlash that I know will happen when they any game that that team loses wow. I don't care if it's a it's, it, it doesn't have to be a series they will get so much shit because people love talking so much shit on the Timberwolves yep they, they, you know they'll be oh it's the fakest one seed ever it's a, they're frauds blah, 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 blah that's why I'd rather be a two or a three win a series you know you lose yeah it happens yeah. whatever but that's that's where I'm at at least. Okay, uh, I will say it is not a victory if they if they win one. Now, when when you talk about absolute dysfunctional franchise, that's the Minnesota Timberwolves. It Webster's you would look up the meaning. What, what is the definition of a fucked up franchise that can't win in the playoffs? And it would have the old Timberwolves logo, right? So. Even if they won a series and they lost in the second round, I would consider it a defeat because of where we thought they were before January 1st. I, I, I really thought, man, like there's not a lot of teams that can play with this team. Um, but now things have changed just a little bit. And so um, I, I, I'm certainly not as comfortable. I mean, I, I, I looked at something like four different categories in turnovers uh, and I believe we are like 23 through 28. Like that, I'm, I'm not talking about, you don't want to be first in turnovers. I'm talking about turnovers. It's on the backside. Like we're the worst. Okay. When it comes to turning the ball over. And so that's not giving me a lot of warm fuzzies going into the playoffs, considering that right now, um, the way that we seem to drop games in the fourth quarter it just it just doesn't feel right, so I I, I don't think that that's a, a a victory even if we win a series this year. No, I did see this stat. Um, it's a I I don't even know where someone pulled this stat up from, but it goes over turnover comparative to offensive style, and what does Chris Finch want the Wolves to do all the time is move the ball. Right. The Wolves move the ball the like. I think they were like fourth or, or third or fourth or something, which is crazy because we always clamor for them to move the ball more. 
Um, so I will say it does lead to more turnovers when you're playing less ISO ball. But at the same time, yes, those turnovers are so, – some of them you watch and you're like, what the hell are you yeah. doing? And yep. so, yeah, yeah, it's got to change. You have to understand this is going to be so hard for me to do right now, but I will do it because I respect – the game and athletes that much. Um, you know, I can't stand LeBron James. I cannot stand him, but I will salute him. He just reached 40,000 points. Uh, I don't think anybody is ever going to touch that record. And so as much as I cannot stand that guy, I've got a lot of respect for that, that Mark. You got to shout out uh, LeBron. Absolutely. Um, the one that's super fun to watch is, uh, in Iowa, Caitlin Clark. I was going to get to that. Yep. Yep. And, and I did want to say the, the only thing I, I didn't get right to Caitlin Clark, but, uh, I saw a stat, I think it was on sports center and they showed like the four big major, uh, professional sports in America. And they showed like number one in goals or points is like Wayne Gretzky. No one's ever going to touch that record. Then they showed Jerry Rice receiving yards. And the, and the one that should have was Larry Fitzgerald Jr. He never had a quarterback. so it had, And there was still a lot of distance between those two records. Then they went to, uh, to uh, baseball and Nolan Ryan strikeouts. No one ever going to touch that either. And then you see LeBron at 40,000, you know, Kareem, uh, I believe is 38,300, something like that. No one is ever going to touch LeBron's record ever. And, and I just find it interesting that all four sports, there is such a gap between the number one guy and the second, you know? So that's why I got to say, hate the fucker, but well done, LeBron. <laughs> really, you know? Um, go ahead. You want to say something about Caitlin? Because I did. Well, well, I, well I was just saying, I, like, it is... I don't watch a lot of women's basketball, quite honestly. I, yeah. I don't. Um, but I've seen stuff where, like, now that she is she is declared for the draft. Um, the NBA ticket, draft? Oh, oh well, she, <laughs> The WNBA ticket prices have already gone up, and people yeah. are buying more season tickets. Yep. And I will say, this is – she could potentially be the one to change this sport like a LeBron has wow. with how, how good she is. I would go, man, if she comes, you know, I don't know where she'll get drafted, whatever. Well, she will. Like, she'll come to Target Center and guaranteed you'll be able to get tickets. But well, maybe not now. Yeah, right. I've never been to a Lynx game. I would go to watch her, her yeah, play basketball. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it's funny because I, I was going to bring it as my my co co-pilot here. Um, I have a Pistol Pete Maravich basketball card, and it's obviously not in mint condition, but I was just going to burn it. She did – Past Pistol Pete Maravich uh, for most points, be man or woman or whatever, uh, for NCAA is scoring all time. And here's a point I'm going to make on this because there's some folks that are like, well, Pistol Pete, and I don't know how much you know about Pistol Pete Maravich, but like the dude was, he, I don't know what it was. It was like 30, he averaged like 38 points a game in college or whatever. He didn't have the three point line though. And so there are people saying, well, well, Caitlin Clark, you know, she can shoot from Minnesota, you know, in, while she's playing in Iowa city and still hit. Uh, but Pete never had that. So, you know, it's kind of tainted. No fucking way that chick can ball. And she got it. I don't care if there's a three point line or not. She is the hands down all-time leading scorer in NCAA basketball, and I love P Pistol Pete Maravich, but doesn't matter. Yeah, she surpassed him, and no one should bitch about it. It's badass. It's it's so cool. It, it, it's so cool. Yep. I love it. I agree. And and I was wondering, I was like, is there anything? Because the Lynx weren't that good last year, right? Is there anything that they can do? Like, can they throw like a, hey, we'll give you five electric cars and uh, Kevin Garnett's personal home phone number uh, and, you know, a ton of Ludafist to trade up in the draft so they could get Caitlin Clark. I mean, obviously nobody's got, who's got the number one overall is going to say, yeah, we'll, we'll consider that. Right. 
I, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to pull up the mock draft here. I mean, let's see where the, the links are. So the links got the seventh pick. Yeah. Looking at Haley Van Leith from LSU, who's also really good. Um, looks like Indiana will probably get Caitlin Clark. Oof. Um, Oof. So. Okay. That's, that, I don't know. And then the, the, you remember Angel Reese from LSU? Yeah, not a big fan. Where did she fall in the draft? Yeah, she fourth with the LA Sparks. Oh, but, really? You know, she can't pass any classes, so I don't know. No, I know that. Is. I know that. Yeah, and then her mom gets in fights with other moms. Uh, you know, it, ridiculous. Uh, okay. Well, I, I will say this, sir. If you want to go to a Lynx game, let's do that then, man. Like, I, you know, like maybe we'll wait for it to uh, – to uh, marinate a little bit, Caitlin Clark in, you know, the WNBA, but you're talking about during the summer as well. So, you know, if the twins are doing poorly, let's go check out a Lynx game, man. I'd do that with you. I, I would do that. I would do that. Go oh, Okay. So you're, we're recording right now, right? Yep. Okay. So, okay. So once again, we're going back to yin and yang of Johnny Voss and his bipolarism or whatever it is. Uh, I'm going to salute. Wow. That's three salutes in one, one, one show. Uh, I'm going to salute the Minnesota Vikings for officially uh, parting ways with Alexander Madison, uh, our top notch running back. Yeah. Right. Um, and I'm saluting the Vikings for, because they weren't going to do it during the season, obviously. Uh, but they basically said, yeah, you fucked up. You trusted us. And we made a huge error. And so they just cut ties. The guy had under four yards rushing per carry. And do you know of any running back in Vikings history that's never scored a rushing touchdown? I, I That's crazy. The run game was non-existent yep. last year. Um, and they saved like, they even saved like a million after cutting him. Like it was just a move to just say like, Bye. Yeah. <laughs> like, yep. It was uh, nothing. So. so moving forward, it doesn't matter who's going to be under center this year because we're going to get to that in just a second. But the Vikings have no running game whatsoever. It, it was evident last year that you could really rely on. And the year before, Cook's last year, he had splashes every once in a while. But on second and goal from the two, third and goal from the one, fourth and goal from the one, we ain't getting, we ain't running the ball in. If you do not, you know, like I say with the Wolves, if you don't have an offense-defense balance, if the Vikings do not have any kind of running threat whatsoever, and that's why I thought the Lions were so good this year, um, it's not going to matter who your quarterback is. If if you're going to rely on him throwing the ball 50 times a game, uh because you have no, no substantial. And now we have no running game whatsoever. Well, you Chandler that, maybe, but here's the thing though. And that's in Cam Akers is free agent. I could see them bringing back Cam Akers. I like Cam Akers, but he's not going to be the workhorse though. Well, no. And, and, and everyone is, Oh, there's the Chandler Chandler's running back one. Now I, I think he can give you some bursts. He absolutely can run the ball. The guy cannot block yep. whatsoever, whatsoever. Yep. And he, he, that just exposes so much on the offensive side. Um, Derrick Henry, you go sign Derrick Henry. I, I would, where are you going to find the money for it? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, mean, I would, I would love that. I would love that addition. Um, however, you got so many things hanging in the balance right now before you can even talk about bringing in a free agent running back. And and because of that, it's the same thing with how do you draft a running back in the draft when you have other needs, uh, depending on how this is all going to play out. Now, let's bring up Kirk Cousins because I think I have shifted my way of thinking again because even like up until maybe three days ago, I was like, well, I think if the Vikings want to be successful this next year, I think Kirk Cousins would be the answer to that. Now I'm kind of shifting a little bit and saying, what if we just cut cut ties with him and, and go, go forward and try to figure this out right fucking now instead of going, well, 
we got two years to play with, maybe, depending on who we're going to draft in um, in the first round. But with Cousins now going to attempt to to test free agency, I don't know, man, because everyone said he's not getting he's not giving us the the hometown double double check discount. Okay, I heard two years. 70 mil, but 50 mil of that is guaranteed, which I think the Vikings are overshooting their, you know, their load, whatever. I think that's kind of dangerous because what if that Achilles is not back or what if he gets a concussion that brings out $50 million guaranteed and he's not going to. So you see where I'm going with this? I don't know. And it's not like the guy needs money. Okay. But if he wants to get paid that last time and Minnesota is down the ladder because he knows he can get paid elsewhere, then maybe it's just time to go. That's fine, man. Thanks for your service, but goodbye. I, I think you got to – here's the thing. He, he absolutely deserves to get paid, I think, for, for – I think he is the best quarterback out there right now. He obviously is. Um and yes, he's coming off an injury, but a hell of a year just for when he played. Um, now, yes, I, I the the fifty mil. I don't know. Like it, it's it's hard because he 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 absolutely gives you the best chance to win. I think if you bring him in, because it's hard to say goodbye to someone when you know you want to win and you don't know what you're going to get in the next quarterback. Um, so that's that's where it's tough. I have my own blueprint from what I think will end up happening. Um, but I'm curious because we can go over that in a second, but I'd almost just let it, it sounds like it's, it's us, Atlanta and uh, I almost said Oakland, but uh, Las Vegas, that's, that's yep. kind of in the running. Yep. Um, I'd let someone go. Well, Washington, him. some have said he might make this glorious return to Washington. I don't see that happening, but yeah, no, uh, no, no one else there. Like who, right. who's he going to throw to? Um, so I'd let Atlanta go pay him $80 million, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I've seen the, the, the Vikings also talk about, you know, having a bridge quarterback still, um, I've seen would how much money would you throw at Baker Mayfield this year? So I heard uh now wait now I gotta think of who oh I heard Atlanta maybe courting him as their backup deal. Um I would not be aesthetic aesthetically pleased with a, a signing of Baker Mayfield, and I don't know. If you want to talk money, um, I don't know, a cup of coffee. I, 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 I just don't want Baker Mayfield. I don't think that he fits the the mold right now, especially if you don't have a running game. Right. I'm just thinking, you know, if you give him a two year deal, do your thing. Um, you'd rather you'd feel better with a, a rookie quarterback out there. I guess it would depend on who the rookie quarterback is. Because the Baker Mayfield is by far the second best quarterback out there. I mean, right he, now. Had a, he had an all right year. Like I don't get me wrong, he did have a pretty good year uh, with a team that wasn't really that good. Yeah. So I mean, I, I just I, I've never been sold on Baker Mayfield. So I just I see him as joining a long list of guys who may be beyond their prime. Maybe not. Uh, but but. I don't think necessarily makes your team better uh, down the road. You know what I mean? And and so for that, I, now with Cousins, I brought this up just yesterday with my buddy, and and uh, it, it was great. It was great how it was presented because he didn't know where I was going. But I um, I asked him about his thoughts on Cousins, and he was like, ah, oh, yeah, this and that, and and I said, uh, let me ask you a question. I was like. Where's your wife from? Did she graduate? You know, where you graduated? They're together. Yep. And I said, where do you live right now? And he said, uh, and he gave me the, the, you know, and I said, why did you specifically move to that area? And he said, well, um, my wife was looking at schools for our young kids and um, she decided that this was the area that we wanted to go. And, and, and I was like, so, Basically, and I don't know, I could have got it wrong, but I was like, basically, um, 
the decision of where you guys cohabitat was a lot of input uh, from your wife, right? Like that's where you're raising a family based on. And he goes, yeah. And I go, Kirk Cousins' wife's from Atlanta, man. Like, it, and all of a sudden he's like, holy cow. He's like, like somebody else said, it took me a long time to get there. But he's like, why is he asking me all these questions about personal questions about my family? And once I got to the point, he goes, wow, that makes sense, man. And I'm like, now, well, I mean, well, I will say absolutely. That is an absolute, like, yes, it absolutely fits. However, I think if <laughs> your significant other says, Hey, I'm going to make $30 million this year. I don't care where we live. If you're going to make $30 million this yeah. year, you know what I mean? So I, I just, uh, I got to believe that Atlanta right now is the front runner in the, in the Kirk cousins sweepstakes. And, and the more it goes on, I, I guess I, I'm not so passionate about like, if we lose him, all right, that's, that's the way it goes. Um, I think that it, it's tough because he does all the things that you want your quarterback to do. He's a great club. He's a great locker room guy. Um, he, he's not, uh, he doesn't have an ego. He he says the right things. He does the right things. Um, and so you obviously you want, and it seems like everyone loves him. Um, but like I say, if, if his time has passed in Minnesota, then um, okay. But I certainly don't because the Denver Broncos just cut Russell Wilson today and we wouldn't even be picking up a huge contract because they owe him like, I think 27 mil or something like that. No fucking way do I want Russell Wilson on this team. And I don't know how you can do it so that everybody, like, can the state all, like, rally around and say, this is absolutely not going to be tolerated. You can't bring Russell. It doesn't matter who you draft. You can't bring Russell Wilson in here. Period. I, I No, uh, yes. I, <laughs> I think it has a decent chance of happening, though. I know it. And because you're only gonna have to gonna you're only gonna have to pay him like the league minimum because right. he's making so and so. you can groom our rookie quarterback that we drafted in the first round. But you want Russell fucking Wilson teaching our young quarterbacks how to play football? No, I don't. Okay, and oh, he was really great in Seattle. No, sorry, I do not want that guy on my team, and I don't want him teaching the game of football to an understudy. I don't. And if we know that, why doesn't management know that? Why should he even be a conversation, a whisper? Because of his pedigree, past pedigree, I should say. Okay. Well, he, he sucked the last <laughs> E. And if, all right, that's enough on that. Okay. Let's, let's still talk quarterbacks because yeah, I do have a problem again. Uh, NFL Combine was this past week. And when I want to talk about entitlement or privilege, and I already brought up, what's the guy from SC? Cam, what's his name? From USC. Oh, 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 uh, geez. Um, uh, Williams. Cam um, Williams, right? The heir apparent, the crowning prince of the next NFL quarterback class. Nope. And he didn't go to the combine. Neither did, uh, what's his name? May from North Carolina. And there was one other quarterback that did not let it. That's tops in supposedly, you know, who I'm talking about Dane Daniels LSU, right? Yep. Okay. The combine was always set up to show your abilities and say, why NFL teams should take a, a chance on you, not only drafting you number one overall, but in the first round. And now guys are just like, man, nah, you know what? Not going to do it. I hope Cam Williams falls on his ass. I hope he is the biggest, but he is the Ryan Leaf of this draft. You know, uh, don't quote me on this. I don't believe CJ Stroud did it last year. Well, I still like him. He's a Christian, so I don't <laughs> care. Um, I will tell you who is making some noise, though, and we brought him up before, the J.J. McCarty from Michigan. Uh, 
Now, wait a minute, though, because here's the thing. Everyone said that this guy has the talent, the skills, and this, and that he's a totally coachable guy. He blew it up at the combine. They're now saying that he might be in the top 10 picks in the first round, which still leaves the Vikings, you know, outside in the cold. Uh, I don't know, man. Everybody is saying, like, if you get somebody like Tom Brady that nobody, everyone was sleeping on, everyone was sleeping on, and this guy actually turns out to be a stud, I mean, I am only hearing good things about this guy, and nobody knows because all Michigan did was run the ball and beat teams by 50 points. So you could never see what this guy actually had to offer. So I'm just, you know, like I say, what I do with my students, I'm just giving you facts. I'm not giving you my well, opinion. Not, but that's what scares me a little bit about him. I'm all for it. Like if he's coachable, if he's a great guy, if he, he puts the work in, love it. Absolutely. But like you said, you just ran the ball all the time, and that that's where it gets because you're not going to have a run game, is what we know. Like you're going to have right. to throw the ball. Um, and I, if, if if he is this, that that's why it's just scary to me. I I, I think with with a McDan with a Jane Daniels, a, a May, a Williams, I think it's just the you know you you know what I can do. Um, I don't. I don't know the whole decision not to, to participate. I think it should be, I don't know if I want to say it should be required, but if that's what, it, that's what you do to get evaluated. I mean, right now do other, uh, other sports don't do a combine though. That's the right. thing. So that's where it's a little different. It's like, well, why, why is it just the NFL that's doing combines for getting for, for draft evaluations what? when you, you get, you get scouted during the how many years in college anyway. So that's where it, it's not a huge deal to me. Um, if you had the opportunity, I'd still probably take a Drake May and a Jaden Daniels over a JJ McCarthy, but I'd be willing to entertain the upside of JJ McCarthy. And once again, and, and what uh, Cam Williams probably going to go to the Chicago bears. God, Is I it? love that. I love that. Right. <laughs> Don't you think? Why can't I think of his first name? It's definitely not Cam. Um, what? Caleb. You know, hey, there it is. Caleb. Caleb Williams. Yeah. I I don't care. I I won't take the time to learn his name. I he really wants won't. to play for the Minnesota Vikings so badly. Who does? Yeah. Williams. I, are those wants, crickets? Are those crickets in the background? I, I, he he wants to throw to Justin Jefferson and be a Viking so so bad. You should want to throw to Justin Jefferson. I agree, Absolutely. but this is my response. <laughs> well, hey, don't want him. So I don't like, want him, man. No, no, no way. Neither do I. Neither do I. Um, Jaden Daniels though threw to Justin Jefferson in college. They were roommates. Familiarity. Thoughts on that? Wait now. Because how, how long has Jefferson been, been in the game? Uh, what is it? Three three oh, years now? Right. I don't so, know. Jaden Daniels, yeah, I don't think he's a starting him quarterback. In college? He wasn't the starting quarterback, but um, let me look it up here. But I know they were roommates in college, obviously. Familiar. Really? I, I was not aware of that. He wasn't the uh, – oh, he was a starter in 2019. He, he's actually been in college for five years. Um, well, that's yeah, he, threw to, he threw to JJ in 2019 quite a bit. I did not, I was not aware of that. That's wow, that's it. That's an interesting, that's an that's a spicy meatball right there that you just threw out there. I, I was not aware of that at all. Um, well, it's gonna heat up here very, very soon. And, uh, like I say, you know, uh, we will wish Kirk Cousins the best in whatever whatever new adventure he's going to have. Um, but like I say, I, I don't think I'm going to lose too much sleep over Kirk Cousins if, if, if he's gone. So I agree. I agree. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, baseball news, anything right off, uh, right off the bat for you. Brooks Lee looks really good in spring training. I'll tell you that. Right. Okay. He is double machine off of MLB caliber pitching. Okay. Do you has anything changed 
about you thinking if he's going to make the trip north on opening day. He probably won't, right? No, because I think what you're looking at is a final outfield spot. Um, and that's what Manuel Mart, when we traded for Margot, Margot. he's going to, yep. he's going to take that yep. injuries. I could, yeah. Um, yeah. but I think they want him in the infield right now. Um, he could play the outfield. I think like Royce, like Royce did. Um, I'd never want to see Royce in the outfield ever again. No, though. no, um, no, right. No. And, and that's why I think Brooks, you know, you can, if he's needed, he'll go, he'll go out there and play. But, um, I don't think he makes a trip. I think if, you know, if there's an injury, he'll probably be that first guy up. Because so, he so my question is, is that would, would Julian play first then? Now I heard Julian's defense has been a lot better in, in spring training ball. I don't know. They've only been at it for a few weeks, um, but that's always been a concern, but he's young. But if Brooks Lee were to make this squad uh, with, potentially Julian and Royce in the, in the others that that would be the spot because Brooks would have the second base, correct or not? Yeah. I think what you would see is you'd see a Brooks, Julian, Kirilov, Carlos Santana turntable of, of rotating because Julian uh, can play first. He can DH. Carlos Santana is going to DH yep. play first. Kirilov can, you can play him in the outfield. You can DH him if you want. Uh, Brooks Lee, Brooks Lee could go play third. He could play short. Um, I mean, he, he can play honestly, wherever you want. It's kind of like a Willie Castro type yeah. type player too, because yeah. he's also a switch hitter. Um, so do you happen to see Royce's grand slam the other day? That hit guy him is out a, of the state, hit him out of the stadium, dude, seriously. When, um, when, when the bases are loaded with Royce Lewis, yeah. you, just, you gotta, it's you, like, he's got extra juice or something, you know, like he knows. He knows. Okay. Uh, one quick question, because, you know, you seem to be up on rules and things, because I don't understand this. So you saw when we signed Carlos Santana, he wanted his number 41, um, which he's worn his whole career. And I believe Joe Ryan wears that, correct? And I believe the price for that jersey is standing at $250,000. And I believe Joe Ryan uh, offered to give it to him for free. And Major League Baseball stepped in and said, that's illegal. You can't do it. The price is $250,000. Why? Can you tell me what, what, why is that a rule? You have to pay for your number? I've never, I, that's bullshit because I've never, it's a number. He's going right. to give it to you for free. It's a number. What, it's why can Major League Baseball do that now? Is that because of the Juan Primo rule? Uh, you don't know what I'm talking about, do you? Nope. <laughs> Robert De Niro made a great movie called The Fan with Messy Snipes. And in it, there was this deal where Messy Snipes wanted his number and Juan Primo would not give it to him. And anyways, uh, I've never heard that, that you have to pay for it. And why is it so high? Well, I know some people do that. Like it's a, you know, yeah. hey man, I've I'm always you got to give me that money, right? And then, but it's like, free. I think it's cool for Joe Ryan to be like, here, you can, you can have it. Like that's, I'll give it to you for free. I didn't know that you put it. I got to look into it because I've never. I just saw a headline that said like, MLB said no, and I'm like, well, that's stupid. I kept scrolling, but like, that, come on, like really? That I, I, don't it. I don't get it. I don't get it, and that. Where does that money go? That goes to MLB? Who gets yeah, paid maybe, for that? I don't know. The commissioner. I, maybe just, well, no, I thought like in the, the one Boys and deal, you would have to give that player. Like I was number 11 in, in high school. On my whole career, I was number 11. And my senior year, I had to give up. I said, if I can have number 11 for soccer, I will give you number 11 for basketball. And that was our, our trade off. All right. Uh, Cause that was from Bloomington Lutheran as well. And he wore number 11 the whole time. And so, okay, that was a trade off. But what I'm saying is like, I always thought that these guys like, no man, you buy me a car and I'll give you your number or what. And that would go directly to the player. That's why I don't understand who gets blocked, how major league baseball can block that guy 
from saying here, here, I, you know what? I think I want to be 55 this year. So you got 41 weight in the wings. Take it, Carlos. It's fine. Well, and Anthony Edwards is now number five and Kyle Anderson like just took number one right this year. Like it's just like, yeah, that's boom. He wasn't, no, I paid him this and it was just the price tag that was set by the league or I don't even know. It, stupid. We, just, we live in a fucked up world, don't we? Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. Now opposite. Cause I want to, I want to end on a high note here. Um, do you happen to see what Mr. Bryce Harper said? Because uh, the Twins played the Philadelphia Phillies in spring training just the other day. I don't believe it was a win, but Mr. Bryce Harper had something to say about the Minnesota Twins. Did you happen to catch it? Hey, man, I keep telling you this rotation is going to be better than you think, and Bailey Ober, is he's, he's working his way to a number two. Bryce Harper said, if he's throwing 95, 96 up in the zone – Good luck, the entire league. Good yeah, luck. No, he said, yeah, you're right. He said, good luck, Central Division or whatever yeah. it was. And I brought it up because of that because show to be named later fans, Noah Storzinger has done nothing but praise Bailey Ober and was in his corner. And I'm always kind of like, eh, eh. and I just, I wanted to bring that up because, man, Bryce Harper's saying it, man, then maybe we should be be listening. I don't know. He, he likes what Bailey Ober's over uh, has shown so he, he pitched three innings in spring training ball against a major league roster and struck out seven guys wow in three innings wow uh it's still spring training ball but uh you know it gives me at least hope uh you know like uh i read the lavelli neil column on sunday about our our starting rotation and i believe he he brought up things about Chris Paddock is really confident that he's going to have a great year, um, but that's that is a question mark. Bailey Ober is a question mark, at least right now. Um, Joe Ryan is a question mark. Pablo, no question mark. That's an exclamation part, uh, exclamation mark right down the fucking middle, man. Uh, and that gives you okay a fifth start. Oh. Do you happen to see that uh, Mr. Descalfini, uh, he uh, injured already, but he well, should be back by opening day. So, that, well, no, job. he's pitching next week, I believe. He's ramping up, but, you know, I saw it and I'm like, God, can we just sign Jordan Montgomery right now? What? Like, no, just, no. Please. All that said no. They said no. So, like, and, and it's not even that, that, like, because guess who's also pitched? really well this year is Louis Varland and, and, you know, he could be that fifth starter, but after that, you're like, Hey, that's great. But like, you need more depth and it's Simeon Woods Richardson's pitching really well. David Fest is coming up, but like, I, I, I like to have an option past a Louis Varland, you know, right. but right. I just, agree. Can we, just, what I've been yep. can we just do it. Like can we just, no, I don't care don't. if it's Blake Snell. Just give, I don't know. Well, like, what do you mean? I would love Blake Snell in that rotation. You oh, would? I, I, I'd prefer Montgomery over Blake Snell. That's all fine and good. But either one of those guys are, 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 you know, the the emperor of the evil empire. No, it's not an evil empire, but the emperor already stated in no uncertain terms that we are not going to spend money on those guys. So, uh, you know, I mean, let's bring it back Sydney Ponson. I don't know. I Discofani, what's your over on? I'll I'll put it the uh the over under on his innings at um seventy five innings this year. Over or under? As a Minnesota twin, yeah, under, under, <laughs> under. I would take that bet. Okay, I well, would. Okay, I, that's my point. I mean, well, yeah. <clears throat> now. Yeah. You're only preaching to the choir right now because that's what I I think we've had many podcasts about. This. Yeah, I said podcast about this. Okay, so there you if go. He gives you if he gives you ninety innings this year, right? Yep. But he goes four and zero with a two point five ERA. Is that a a a, a positive? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, it is. I'll just. How, I mean, I'll just. I'm not sharing against the guys on my team. 
I mean, I don't know anything about how he's going to look in a Minnesota Twins uniform. I didn't think he would make the team, the, the opening day roster. I did not. Okay. I thought they might in money, money deals, they would have just put them on waivers. Well, all right. Not even paying them. That's the thing. Right. Everyone else is paying them. So it doesn't really matter at this point, but well, like, it's his, his job to win, I guess, but uh, he's hurt right now. I don't know if he's going to make they, the, the report I got was he'll be ready for opening day, which he ain't going to be the starting pitcher on opening day. But I really questioned whether he would be our number five guy. I really did. I, I didn't think he'd be on the team. Switching to offense really quick. Again, it's it's spring training ball, but, you, you know, you got to get excited. Yeah. Two guys that have looked pretty pretty good this, this offseason or this, this spring training so far. Uh, two guys, one guy that you've been very uh, critical of okay. is going to play center field this year, Byron Buxton. Wait, no, I thought he only played like two games so far in spring training. He has, but he's also – I think he's got a couple hits in each of them. Um, looking really good in the off in the uh, the, well, the backfields. Um, the he other guy, two games in in center field, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's not play him again in center field. <laughs> For the rest <laughs> of spring training, right? Like, him, right? But yeah. the other guy that uh, it's it's exciting. Like if this guy can can be what he was two years ago, Jose Miranda, Miranda is looking really Miranda. good. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, well, <laughs> I'm just <laughs> saying. It, you have an issue then at this point is like, who the hell do you play? You know, like, it, but, but where are you, where are you going to find that bats for Miranda though? Exactly. You, That's what I'm saying. I mean, like, you know, I mean, let's, it's all fine and good, but in a, in a perfect world, what if Alex Kirilov is the guy that everybody thought he was going to be, you know, which I don't have a lot of, a lot of hope I, in that. I am. This is the most down I've ever. I I was so excited for this kid. Yeah. Um, the most down I've ever. I I'm. I think Jose Miranda's gonna have a bigger year than than Alex Kirilov. Wow. I, I would love to be proved wrong. Now I'd love to see Miranda break out again, but I, I worry a lot about Mr. Kirilov this year. Okay. Uh, last last thing that I I want to. And by the way. I thought Miranda would would not even be in the Minnesota organization after after last year. I I kind of cheer for him because I I had heard things about him. He hits the ball hard, whatever. Okay, um, he was hurt the whole year. Yeah, your thoughts on a guy that we're paying nine million dollars to be a Triple A guy, Randy Dobnik. Good guy, but and and everyone said. Yep. Okay. And there was some things about, I think a finger or something that doesn't allow him to throw the pitches that got him to the major league and got him that contract altogether. I think he's worked on a slider because of those issues, but you're paying a fucking guy $9 million to play in St. Paul. Well, it's not $9 million annually. I mean, he's getting a million dollars. So, you know, it's more than you'd ever pay a triple a guy. Yeah. Um, but it sucks because I really liked Randy Dobnak. I, I really yeah. did. Um, and I just I, – I feel like there were times too, though, where we could have given him the opportunity. But the hard part is he's not on the 40-man this year or just even last year. So it's 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 hard to – you know, when you got to cut a guy and create a spot, you know, right. it's hard to like, well, let's just give Randy Dobnak a chance. But Because he struggled in AAA, and this is his last year to prove it. For sure, and I think well, that's what I was going to ask. That's what I was going to ask. Uh, does he because he didn't? I don't think he played one game in the majors last year, right? No, nope. no, nope. does he make a, a return to the major leagues this year? And if so, is he going to make an impact on this ball club? I think where this club is at right now, anyone that's coming up is because they, they're going to need to make an impact. So that's the thing is if he, if he is on this ball club next year, it's because they had to create a 40 man spot. And it means he was pitching really well down at triple right. a. Um, so I can see him getting called up. I, I think, you know, when, I, when we talk about starter depth, if I think it would be a little scary to see like, Hey, Randy Dobnak starting a game this year because you yeah. would have had to clear a 40 spot and it, he's starting a game, it means you, you're dealing with a lot of injuries. But, 
hey, if, I'm willing to see him come back. I really liked I really liked him. I think some teams were figuring him out, but like I said, like you said, it was it was that finger that that right. kind of screwed the whole thing. I'd hate for that to be kind of kind of it for him. For right. I hate to be that's the way he goes out. I, I would definitely cheer cheer for him or like be in his corner. Um, you know, and, and you brought up Varlin and I was wondering exactly what we're going to get out of that kid. Like if he's going to be strictly bullpen, if he's going to be spot start today, because we got no other options as far as a, a fifth starter. Um, but I'm, I'm excited about Varlin because I guess Rocco did nothing but praise him about his playoff experience last year. And if that's a kid that, that can help this team, man, I'm all about it. Varlin gives me the same, I think, you know, he's obviously not the same pitcher as Bailey Ober, but he's following Maybe kind of the same, same track. And and that's what's what's cool. And to your point, like he pitched well in the playoffs um, out of the bullpen. It, it's nice to get that experience. I Again, you know, when I thought we were going to go get another starter, I said, yeah, pitch him out of the bullpen. And then we, you know, upgraded this bullpen to the max. So you don't even need him in the bullpen anymore. He'll be the first guy up from AAA. Um, if, unless he takes, oh, he, he makes the team. I think he makes the team for sure. I'm, I'm just wondering if he'll be that fifth starter or if they will just bring, cause if you do put him in the bullpen, everyone's saying this bullpen is lights out or, or should be lights out this year. That is so much more improved. Um, no inch angle Pagan this year. So that's enough right there. Right, our ERA should just just go right. He down. was really good last year, though. He was. I know he was. It sucks. Here's so. the thing. No, and that's that's the weird thing because you're like, God, you hate every time he's out in the mound. The guy had an ERA under three. <laughs> he was certainly good, and that was the, that was the weird thing. But no, Louis Farland's not going to come out of the pen this year at all. I think um, you don't think so. No, I think they got plenty of guys too that they can call up, and that I mean. You even got a guy like Matt Cantorino who who can come out of the pen or he can start games too. Um, if Di Scafani's hurt, like he'll he'll pitch and he'll be that fifth starter, or you know they'll stretch him out of AAA and he's going to be that first starter up. Okay, all right. Well, um, to recognize, you know, maybe he's the only fan of the show to be named later. We have gone. Um, over one hour tonight. So um, I think we should wrap it up. Is there anything else that you want to talk about tonight? No. Nope. Okay, I will see you for the Women's Big Ten uh, tournament here in Minneapolis just in a, in a week or so. Uh, for Noah Storzinger, uh, the guy that always keeps me honest, I'm Johnny Voss. Been watching the Show to Be Named Later podcast. See you next time.